Welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. It's a thoroughly miserable summer um, July day here in England. I'm in the UK for anybody who doesn't know. Um, I'm sick of sitting inside. So it's pouring down as you can see. So I'm going to have a jammy dodger. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to answer some questions I've had over the summer about general um, issues with mowers. The main question I'm getting this summer is I've serviced the cab, I've changed the plug. Um, I've changed the air filter, put it all back together, it still won't start and the question then is, now what? So in this video I'm going to cover the now what. If you've gone to the trouble of servicing the cab, doing all the usual things, the plug, the air filter, and it still won't start, I'm going to show you a few common mistakes on these Briggs engines. So yeah, I'm just filming this um, video, as I said the weather's bad, I'm going to put this more on the bench and show you a few things that could go wrong when you put this back together, or just general things that uh, might help you get your lawnmower started again. As I say, it's a horrible day, it's the start of the summer holidays, you know, one nice weather would be lovely, you could go out and do some things with the lads and stuff, but it's absolutely pouring down. So I'm in the garage, um, I've had a lot of questions, I've mentioned people just saying that they've taken the mower apart, they've, they've gone to the trouble of trying to fix it rather than just buying a new one. And now I can't get it running and I can't answer all the comments because I still get absolutely thousands pretty much every day. Um, but I'm going to put them over on the bench. I'll show you the few common things that I've come across over the years doing this. And we'll have a chat as we go along and hopefully I'll enjoy filming the video. You'll enjoy watching it. And it's just nice to say hello again. So leave me a comment in the comments section if you uh, enjoy the video. Thanks. Yeah, so best of a, a quick tidy up. You can see here, still got the one mower. Garage is still... Um, a bit of a mess but got myself a new uh, pressure washer that's pretty good by the way which one did I get I think it's a K3 or a K4 I can't remember but it's it's better than the other one I had much more powerful um, yeah painting I hate painting I absolutely hate it it takes ages it's such a messy stupid thing isn't it it still smells a week later anyway um, I'm going to put this more on the bench I'm going to strip the carb off it and show you the mistakes that people make I still get lots of great comments there's loads of people that are just I can't believe the pe people that comment going, what about this, what about that, why didn't you do this? It's like, I, I, I'll give people a little bit of a clue here, but the general people who've watched the channel, they're pretty polite, but the the, <laughs> the people that just ask, what about this, why didn't you do that, I, I just don't reply anymore. If they just put, please could you help me with this, I've tried to service it, and it still doesn't run, could you give me some advice? Fine, I'm, I'm happy to answer the comments as much as I can. So, just a tip for anybody who's um, not watched the videos, be polite or I won't answer any questions at all. So, I'm going to put this on the bench as I've said, take a few bits off it and show you where you could potentially have gone wrong because I'm all for people trying to fix things like this and not just going out and spending um, the harder, harder than ever earned money on, on new things such as lawnmowers. Um, so anybody who's had a go at fixing it, bravo, hats off to you. Um, if you haven't got it running, hopefully this video will help you out. Now look what's happened, look. Oh. Where's my, I've got a cat now. I, well, I was going to say she could drink it, but I could just mop it up, I guess. <laughs> so, a couple of really silly basic things first that I feel obliged to say. Make sure there's some petrol in here, unleaded, petrol goes in here. And to answer lots of questions I get on that as well, no you don't need to mix anything in the petrol, these are four stroke, not two stroke engines, the oil goes in here, the correct oil is SAE30, need about 400 millilitres, get yourself a measuring jug like that, and put about 400 millilitres in, and that drops in here, normal unleaded petrol in here, don't mix any oil in at all, um, make sure you've got a decent plug, an NGK plug in the front. So, no doubt most people know all this. There's a few other things that you might not know, especially when you take things apart and put them back together that you could get wrong. So let's have a look at that. So let's be honest, unless you've been having a problem with your lawnmower, it's very unlikely you'll have taken any of it apart. You'll only take it apart just to try and you know, get you through the summer or make the mower last long enough to cut the grass before it cuts out. Or speed it up if it's been revving up and down, mess about with the springs. All the, this, this is all genuine things that people regularly do and it's totally understandable. So this is the process that most people would follow to try and get the lawnmower going again um, and do a basic service. So I'm going to do exactly that and I'll show you the steps where I think people can go wrong. So we'll take this plug out of here first of all. Just check there's a gap in the plug. Make sure that you've not over tightened this so far 
the, the plug has actually got bent in. You can actually get these in so hard, so tight, you can actually bend it. And if there's actually no gap here on the top of the spark plug, you will not get sparks. So it's just a simple thing to look out for. And really safety wise, a good um, piece of advice really is just to take out the spark plug before you do anything at all. So let's do this in order of play that people will do. What a lot of people will do next is take the air filter off and they want to have a good look round. Um, and in my experience, especially when I was trying to get my own lawnmower, this lawnmower, um, going about 20 years ago when it first broke, I did what everybody else does and I just presumed it was the springs, the governor springs, so everyone gives these a stretch and a play, or they think there's one missing, things like that. But these are governor springs, these will not stop your lawnmower revving up and down. And as I've said many times on many videos, what does stop the lawnmower revving up and down is changing this diaphragm and gasket in here. So most people get this far, have a tweak with these springs, pull them about, try and stretch them to make it run faster. The other issue is you get with these is sometimes these fuel leaks, which I'll cover later in the video. So for now, I'm going to take this cover off here, this starter recall cover off, show you underneath and show you exactly what I would do. And the great thing about these old mowers is it's basically three bolts to take off and you can take this whole cover off and get into everything you need so we'll just take these off now I always take these off with this impact but I always put them back on by hand you can easily strip the inside threads um, in these de in these um, not decks in the engine casings and you'll have a problem then which you really don't want and I'll find this which I treated myself a while ago I have been repairing a few lawnmowers by the way, just not filming the vids. I've done about three or four this year, but not many at all. Um, we'll put them in there, they can stay there nicely. This whole thing lifts off like this. Okay, I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to show you inside here to show you exactly what things should look like in case you've taken them apart. So from the top here you can see these governor springs here, there are two. There's the longer one which runs along here and everything hooks to this linkage. I'm going to show you a common fault with this linkage when people put this back together and what I call this black plastic triangle part. So I'm going to take the carb off and I'm going to show you some things that can go wrong after you've serviced the carburetor. If you've not seen the, um, the videos for servicing the actual carb to stop these things running up and down, there's loads on my channel. Just type in uh, Briggs & Stratton full service or something like that, you'll find it. There's loads and loads of videos on the channel showing you how to actually service this, replace the diaphragm and gasket and get your machine up and running. If it's revving up and down, that is the repair that you need to do. So let's take this carb off um, as if I was doing this for the first time and I'll show you the mistakes that you can come across. So we'll take this bolt out here and we'll also take this one out at the front here. Let's just see if you can see what I can see. Yeah, I'll turn my camera screen around then, by the way, just in case you wondered. We'll take that one out like that. And then the whole tank, including Kevin Spacey here, he's in trouble, isn't he? Blooming heck. Um, I should stop using that really, shouldn't I? Um, we can take this whole tank and carb off here. And this is where I think most people get into a little bit of difficulty. So you can take this off, you can turn this, and you can unhook the petrol tank like that. And now you've got the whole thing out of the way and off the mower. So to cover another question I get regularly is where do I buy another one of these ignition coils sometimes called magnetos. These are ignition coils and I've done thousands of these little Briggs mowers and I've said loads of times I've had one of these fail. So if you've got a lawnmower without spark I'm going to suggest to you that it's not the ignition coil and I'll give you a reason for that now as well. And the reason I never think it's the the coil, or it never is the coil, is usually because it's the kill switch or the kill switch wire that gets trapped. When you put this recoil cover back on here and actually put this back on, there's a wire and it runs all the way from here right round the back of this flywheel right to the underside of the coil. And when you put this back on, what can often happen is these parts are quite sharp and it digs into the wire which I'll show you around the back of here. So I've just taken this cover off here and you can see there's an actual wire here 
that runs all the way around the back here like this. You can see it runs all the way around underneath and then it runs through a connector here on this ignition coil. So if you're not getting any spark, a few things to check. Check the ignition actual switch, the kill switch here is clean. Pull this handle to make sure you're getting a disconnect. There needs to be a disconnect between these two parts. This mower isn't brilliant for this, but this little tab here on the top has to disconnect. There's a little tab there just below my finger and it has to be a disconnection when this has to move out of the way. If it doesn't move out of the way, you will not get a spark. You'll get no spark to your spark plug. So make sure that's clean and make sure when you pull this handle up here that this these two parts actually disconnect. Also make sure when you're putting this recoil cover back on you don't accidentally split this wire and make sure it's connected under here if you've, especially this is especially if you've had this ignition coil off. These are common faults to find so I'm going to give that a quick clean off just while I've got this cover off. So yeah just normally, to be honest with you, it's my mower. I just get a wire brush and you can see the wire here. See how it just goes underneath here you can actually take these wires out by pressing this little tab down. So that's the first thing I would look at if you've got no spark. That is the first thing I would look at. The other thing I would say that if you've got spark and it still won't start and you're sure you've got fuel, I would take off this flywheel and make sure that the actual keyway has not been moved across. If it moves across, the magnets get out of position and they pass the ignition coil at the incorrect time so you may get spark but it may spark at the actual incorrect time for the engine to actually run so be careful um, of a few things the kill switch the wire make sure it's connected make sure inside here that you haven't got a keyway that's off center from the crankshaft otherwise you will get spark and the lawnmower still will not start okay the next one is the most common one this is the most common reason or most common mistake that people make when putting these back together, this inside the reverse side of this carburetor here, you've got this white um, circular holder and inside it behind there you've got a black rubber washer and what often happens is these can be sat on here and they get stuck on this inlet manifold and people don't notice they're there, they can slide along and people push the carb back on and don't, it doesn't form a seal therefore it doesn't pull the air and the fuel through and your lawnmower won't start. So I'm going to show you what that normally looks like if these two parts don't remain on the carburetor. It's pouring down, look at this. It's the middle of July, it's like winter. Um, so yeah, I've taken these two parts off here. And what you'll often find is these two parts are sat on here and people don't notice that they're there. So you've got to make sure you get these off. I can't do it with one hand, but the black one goes in first like this. It actually pushes against what I always call like a back wall. Let's see if we can do it. No, I'm not going to try and do it with one hand. But the black one goes in first, and this one is like a retaining clip. This isn't squishy, this is like plastic, and all it does is hold the rubber washer inside. Make sure, absolutely, that you've got these in the correct position. So the first black one pushes against there, you can see, like that, how it's just gone in and pushed against that, and then this second white one here should just click in, like that. And that's exactly how it goes. So let's presume we've serviced this carburetor. We're going to put everything back together. I'm going to show you a few things that people get wrong. So another really common one and one that will really cause you problems is when you can't remember how this linkage goes back through the actual tank. What I'm going to show you is exactly how to put this back on. Normally this part wouldn't come off but you see this part that's got the, the smallest hook on and the other one's got like a bend on. Well this one goes through this white part which is called the governor flap assembly arm and a lot of the time people don't get this back through properly it, it's kind of gets stuck halfway through so the whole thing can't move make sure and when you take the carb off this doesn't normally come up but make sure this goes right through to the bottom so you can feel the bottom of it so everything can still move about and all you've got left remaining is the one with this actual hook on here and all you need to do to put this back on is get the bottom part with the, the actual bend on and push it in this hole on the carb. Now the hole on the carb it goes in is the biggest one here on this triangle smiley face part look. Looks like it's kind of smiling at you, maybe, maybe just me. Um, but basically get it, push it through the hole, make sure you've got your black and white parts on that I've shown you and slide this back on to this inlet manifold. 
so you should feel it nice and tightly go on now at this point a lot of people make mistakes because they don't have this part through here correctly hopefully you can see at the bottom of here where my finger is how far it goes through and everything moves and bounces around a lot of people get this wrong and the other thing I see happen a lot I'm going to zoom in on this now is with this plastic triangle smiley part here whatever that's called I'm going to zoom in now I'm going to show you exactly what I mean so this is quite difficult to film but hopefully you can just see above my finger there's a white plastic part that sticks out and this smiley face is supposed to go left and right and there's like a stop but what often happens is these can end up being pushed across here hopefully you can see that this can't move now and all these springs and this is all stuck everything doesn't move so if you put the card back on make sure the smiley part like that goes left and right and it bounces against this little white plastic part at the back this is what basically stops it going past a certain point so everything should basically move about everything should spring about like this if it doesn't when you put in the actual car back on then I would redo exactly what you've just been shown really and put everything on together make sure the two washers are on the back make sure this is through make sure this goes around make sure the governor springs are in the correct position altering any of this will not stop your lawnmower revving up and down the only thing that will stop that is the diaphragm and gasket which is inside this carburetor I just want to say going back to not having a spark as well I once picked a lawnmower from Bradford um, specifically remember because it was like brand new I think it was about six weeks old and the only problem eventually I found it was inside here where the spark plug goes on there's actually like what, some metal part inside here and it's supposed to click your, your actual spark plug is supposed to click inside here and form a good connection and somehow this had got bent in here so it didn't form a good connection so again it's another simple thing to check if you've got your spark plug in make sure it pushes in and kind of clicks in so you can hear it so you just get your plug there's a definite, definite connection probably can't hear it for the cars going by in the rain but like that there's a definite connection in there and that way you know it's incorrectly just check that it's one of those things it's probably one in a thousand but it could just save you a couple of hundred pounds so as I put this back together I'm just going to talk through a few other things as well I see a lot of these when they miss this space and they don't actually put it back on it's quite simple you just put it back exactly when you took it off if you can remember it slides through here and what I like to do with this is just get this one in here and basically just get it started really like that and the other thing I always see as well is that people don't bother putting this front one on here which is silly because it takes seconds and it keeps your tank nice and level which of course is something you want so we'll pop that in there and we'll tighten this front one up so next I'm going to talk about leaking fuel tanks which I had a question about this week um, and it's becoming more of a common problem as these mowers get older so I'm going to just put these on here like that um, and just push the spacer here this actual spacer goes behind this part on the spacer goes behind the, uh, the starter recoil cover so I had a question earlier this week regarding these fuel tanks here and it doesn't happen loads and loads but as these mows have got older what can happen is you can get a leak on these actual tanks and it's really unfortunate to be honest with you but what uh, generally seems to happen I'll show you that by the way that, that this rubber thing part wants to go back on top of this pipe by the way I always forget to do that that wants to go on there what can happen with these is because you've got this metal or aluminium tank and it goes onto a plastic carb and what people believe happens over time is that the plastic um, carb at the bottom starts to warp and when you change the diaphragm and gasket you don't always get a good seal between the tank and the carb so sometimes there's nothing you can do about it but what I have done in the past is I've used a couple of gaskets uh, and one diaphragm or tried a combination of things to stop it leaking the other reason you'll get a leak like that as well is if the carb's dirty and it can't basically get all the fuel 
through into the engine that it should it's got to go somewhere else it kind of tends to find a way out if you've got running issues but generally if you service the car and get a diaphragm and gasket put it on you shouldn't have any leak problems the other issue i will see with leaks is people who've got a split primer bulb don't buy really cheap ones off ebay they're like rock and they don't last at all you should be able to see in the top of here when you press your primer bulb you should be able to see fuel jump across like that if you don't see that you'll have trouble starting the mower so basically get yourself another primer bulb or get some uh, quick start and spray it into here quickly put the plug back in and try and start it hopefully it'll draw some fuel through but I wouldn't recommend it I would just get another primer bulb make sure that that's working on your mower as well if you're struggling to get this to start so getting a little bit more involved if you've done all this and you've got a good knowledge of these mowers and you've maybe serviced a few now for profit and sold them on and you really can't understand it you've even checked the keyway at the top to make sure the timing's correct and all these things what can happen is it could be the head gasket in here I've replaced mine on this just to do a video basically but I think uh, I'm not going to name the brand it wasn't Briggs or Honda um, but there was a brand of mower that was even new and it required a new head gasket it was almost like they've been in storage for years and the gasket behind here had kind of perished had never been put on correctly they'd never run the mower before they sold it so if you're really struggling you've tried everything else take off all the bolts at the front take off the head gasket um, the head sorry and put the head gasket on put a new one on and see if it starts if you're absolutely desperate and the other thing I want to show you as well is that something I sh should probably show at the beginning is something that I used to do at auctions so this is something I used to do at auctions as well, just make sure the plug's out. Um, I just clamp the handle to release the brake at the back as well. You can see how this brake just moves away from this flywheel here. And you can turn this by hand. Of course, if you have the cover on, just pull the cord. Um, and what you basically do is put the spark plug in here and turn this and make sure the piston goes up and down. If it doesn't, you've probably got a snap piston rod and don't buy them or if you're at an auction I've actually fallen for this before um, somewhere that wasn't an auction something that looked too good to be true went and got it did all the servicing on it and stupidly didn't actually check to see if the piston went up and down and it was a, a non-fix for me so I'll show you this in a second so really you just get yourself a screwdriver put it in the hole and you can probably just see how the screwdriver goes up and down and you turn the engine over that tells you that the piston is moving up and down as it should be just something else to check if you've done everything else and you weren't aware that you're supposed to be looking for those sorts of things what are you doing jersey are you coming to help jersey she's sat in the rain look that's not a good idea are you having a shower where are you going Ooh. so i just want to quickly show you when you refit this recall cover this starter recall cover I've done this loads of times, it's never ever goes on kind of straight away. It will do now, I'll film him, won't it? But they're always a bit clumsy to get on and a bit. There we go. But if you get this wrong, this is what I was saying earlier about the kill switch wire that runs around the edge. You get this on, you push it down, you press in, and you try to get everything in position. It's very easy with the sharpness of the edge of these to actually press into the wire. And actually go through it and even at this point again make sure everything's moving make sure this black smiley face is moving all the governor springs are bouncing people often ask me about this as well these are supposed to be able to set the speed on your mower I'll be honest with you what most people do is they just take this to this position bend this tab down so this thing hardly moves and you've just basically got a set speed sometimes these even have a, like a throttle cable on on these mowers it does very very little on this type of flat head engine it's a total waste of time usually I would just take them off they certainly don't go down to idle speeds like the Hondas or anything like that so make sure you've not caught the kill switch wire make sure you've put um, I'm just going to call it the spacer underneath there so it's not sticking in front of it also make sure that you've got this spark plug lead through this little notch on the front here and again you're not trapping it under this basically just make sure everything moves about and you're going to get your bolts here I'm going to put these back in I'm just going to finish the video by telling you a few other things you might not have thought about as I said earlier just make sure you tighten these up do these ones by hand I've seen a few of these before where people must have done them with the impact and have just basically destroyed the threads 
so I always do these by hand. Just takes a couple more seconds, it saves breaking stuff. Um, I'm going to do the back one as well. I've got this all back together, just going to put this air filter cover back on here. If you've got an old type of Briggs by the way, um, I can't think of what they're called, maybe Pulsar. Um, it's the generation before this, probably 70s and 80s more as I would guess. Um, sometimes they've got um, an auto like a butterfly choke inside that these don't have and you can see it if you look down from above and they're supposed to swing open and closed they can sometimes get dirty but the other thing is they won't work and they won't run correctly if you don't put this screw back in now that's not the case on these mowers but if you've got an older version you can't get working then you've actually taken the air filter box off make sure you put the screw back in often the, uh, the butterfly choke will open and close until you put that back in I'm giving the plug a little bit of a clean up just get a wire brush and just clean it off it was running perfectly alright before to be honest with you but I will put that in there I'm going to tighten this up I'm going to show you how I tighten it up as I said earlier if you tighten it too far you can actually make, make a, it to a point where there's no gap so there's, you get no spark I'll put that in there a little bit of a turn it's basically hand tight plus maybe, I don't know, fifth of a turn, something like that. Make sure this clicks on, like that. So a few other things to mention just before we start this mower up and make sure it runs all right, is never tip the lawnmower right over either to empty the oil out. If you want to empty the oil out and you haven't got an extractor, you, especially if you've got one with a drive, you don't want to get to the drain plug underneath, run the mower for about five minutes and tip it three quarters of the way over and collect the oil into a tub, dispose of it as you should, take it to your local tip. If you tip the mower right over, you may again have a problem where the lawnmower won't start. If it does start, it will, you will get white smoke probably for about 15-20 minutes that will burn off. But I've had occasions where I've actually gone to help people out where it won't start because the oil has gone in the, correct, in the incorrect place. I'm going to show you exactly what happens there now in case it's happened to you. So what happens if you turn the mower over? and it's still full of oil and fuel sometimes is that the oil and fuel can get it'll get all in the exhaust system but it can get in front of the piston in between the piston where the plug goes and it, it's what's called hydro locked and it makes it really hard to pull the cable like you can literally hardly pull it over it snaps back and tries to break your fingers and your arm and you can't understand what's going on and you know you've got no chance of starting it so if that happens to you what I suggest you do is you take the plug out and move it completely out of the way and then you have to just pull the cord over six seven eight ten times something like that make sure that anything that's trapped in there any oil any air it basically just splurts its way out the front and you get rid of that locking that it's created so make sure you've done that pop the plug back in and try it eventually when it starts just leave it running um, and if you've tipped it too far over you've tipped oil and petrol onto and inside this exhaust it's going to take a while to burn off but it will burn off eventually so let's lift this more off the bench I'll take it out in the rain and now I've had a play about with it and we'll just check it starts as it should just bear in mind that this lawnmower is around I don't know 20 23 year old I bought this when I bought my first house and I'm still on the first mower admittedly I did sell it once and I accidentally bought it back about a year later not knowing it was mine until I took it apart and recognised there was loads of different bits in it but let's take it off the bench um, and start this start this mower up so even though it's pouring down let's go out and let's try and fire this mower up just make sure it starts and runs as it should So there we go, if you've had a go at servicing your own mower and it hasn't quite worked out as you planned or as you hoped, hopefully these extra tips and tricks in this video might help you get up and running again, might help you refer a few more of these lawnmowers for profit as well. I might make a few videos as we go through the year, I'm not sure, I have a lot of other things going on work-wise and uh, home-wise and stuff, but all's well here. I hope everybody's well that's watching, it's been nice to come out in the pouring rain and film a video, say hello to everybody and hopefully help a few people out. Do me a favour and leave me a comment and I'll do my best to reply as well. Thanks for watching.